and uh, be happy to have any input that you have about the replacements. Okay. Uh, ask Bob about the drumbeat that started last week about how things are really bad in the economy and uh, why are they starting to tell the truth all of a sudden by meaning the mainstream media? Gee, this sounds like a Betty question. <laughs> but anyway, they uh, first of all, things are worsening. And there's only so much they can avoid. I mean, there's only so much they can lie about. There's only so much they can do to protect themselves from letting the public know the actuality of the difficult situation that the economy is in. And incidentally, had the federal government not been hiring employees for the last 15 months or so, um, maybe 18 months now, uh, unemployment uh, would easily be somewhere between 25 and 30 percent. And in the Depression, it was 25 percent. And so they really don't want to let you know what's going on. But sometimes they can't stop it. A good example was today's uh, um, fall in the stock market. Uh, uh, the market was down um, 100, 144 points. And uh, the last couple of days it was up because the insiders in Washington knew that it would not be favorably accepted into the marketplace that unemployment had climbed at least for the week again. And uh, so they ran the market up a little to absorb the downside that you're going to see today and tomorrow. These are little games they play. And you can see it when they're doing it, uh, if you've been doing this as long as I have. And uh, so it's no secret. And they don't like, you know, old people like me kicking around uh, being able to uh, decipher and decode what they're doing. They don't want the public to know that uh, because it might hurt their profits. It might expose the chicanery that they're up to. And so uh, we do that in a big way about markets and about Wall Street and banking. And we're a thorn in their side, I promise you. And it's one of the reasons that I don't live in the United States, because I wouldn't be safe there. And um, I'm probably semi-safe where I'm at. And, um, and I move frequently, so it makes it pretty difficult for them. But anyway, um, there's some news they just can't hold back. Okay, we do have a, a question that you will enjoy here. Uh, but we're gonna, uh, do we have time before? Yeah, we got time before we go to break. Uh, Mr. Chapman, uh, the government at all levels is now consuming over 63% of the national income of the United States of America. How long is it going to take before the nation collapses? Well, it's a good question. And it's a little complex. First of all, the revenues don't meet expenditures. Now, if you did that, you go bankrupt. Um, the banks, other lenders, corporate America, believe it or not, keep two sets of books. And if you did that, you'd be put in jail. But they can do that. Now, with that said... What they are doing, and have been doing now for almost eight years, they've been making available more and money, more money and credit than is needed to overcome the undertow of deflation in the country. Now, when you have a fall in real estate values, when you have a company go out of business, when you have people unemployed, uh, when you have two sets of books because banks and other institutions, corporations are bankrupt, in reality, you have deflation. And it's sucking the country down a tube. And they offset that.
by creating money and credit in a number of different ways. And that usually leads to inflation. And the government says, well, we don't want the people to know about that, so we'll lie about inflation. And they make up all sorts of formulas, and they stick them in. And instead of an inflation being 7 to 8%, which it is right now, it's probably 1, 1.5%, 1 2%, whatever they say it is this week. And that's how they're bamboozling the public. But the public, each month, each day, knows more and more that they're lying. And the same is true with unemployment. And so we give you the real figures. And so that's what's going on. And what they're going to do now is inject $5 trillion into the economy over the next two years to take us through the following election. And it's going to create inflation, maybe hyperinflation. We'll see. We don't know how strong the deflationary undertow is, and neither do they. And as they shovel this money and credit into the system, which they make up out of thin air, and that's what causes the inflation, they won't know until they get there whether they put enough in, not enough in, or too much in, or they need more. It's just like they had a furnace, and the, the fire goes down, and they've got coals, and they've got to put some more coal in that furnace. Well, the coal, in this case, is credit and money. Mm. And with that thought, we go back to the Chinese, and uh, we want to ask you a, a specific question here that comes up uh, about uh, the Chinese using uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, gold. Where was the question here? The gold and silver. The, take a gimmick. Uh, uh, you know, guys, you got to put your questions in all capital letters. I read them sometimes, and I lose them inside of all the input that you've got. Uh, okay, I don't know what the question is, but it starts with something like, uh, um, hmm. tell Mr. Chairman, I read an article uh, about the Chinese are pushing gold and silver coins on the population of China in the hope of establishing a metal-based currency. Don't know if this is true, uh, but would like to have uh, uh, Mr. Chapman's input in any uh, speculation there? No speculation. It's been going on for three years. They have uh, coin and bullion stores uh, virtually on every corner. Uh, they're advertising on television 24 hours a day to take your yuan and your remimbi and your dollars and Run down and get gold and silver because it's going to be there when you need it. And they're really pushing it. And so that story is true. And it is, I think within two years, they will be absorbing as much gold and silver as the Indians from India. And uh, they, they take about 20 to 25, 25 to 30 percent of the gold produced each year, the Indians buy. And I think the Chinese will buy more. And they're buying darn near as much now. So that's 50 to 60% of world production is going to be taken off the market. And that's, that's an enormous factor. And that, and that is a normal sector. I understand that uh, exclusively. Uh, we have to take a break here. I, I, I heard you, girl. Uh, we got. We only have a minute, so, Mr. Chapman, we're going to go ahead and be prepared for a break, and we'll come back with some more questions and uh, any input that you would like to bring forward. Uh, as we go out to the break, would you please give out your website and contact information? You got a phone number to call to have people call you. Sure. Um, you can go to our site, theinternationalforecaster.com. That's theinternationalforecaster.com. 
you can go to www.intforecaster.com. You can email us at bob, B-O-B, at intforecaster.com. And you can also call toll-free 877-479-8178. That's 877-479-8178. And they have uh, a free copy for you, either hard copy or email. And they have a special offering for a free subscription to the forecaster. And I think it's a terrific deal. So for those of you who would like to subscribe, that would be a good place to go to. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Bob Chapman. Mr. Bob Chapman is the owner of the internationalforecaster.com. I want to tell you he's going to be back after the break. We've got getting the truth out there. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I'd like for you to welcome back Mr. Bob Chapman. And Mr. Bob Chapman, I'm going to let you start off with what you would like to make sure that the military boys and girls get to know, as well as the civilians out there that are looking. And if there's not anything, we can, we'll can just boost on over to questions. Well, I think um, the important thing, as always, is try your best, if you do have any extra money, to pick yourself up. Uh, gold and silver coins, and uh, if you're living in the United States, make sure you have extra food, dehydrated and freeze-dried foods especially, and a water filter, and of course most all of you have things that uh, you can use to defend your family, and you all know how to use them. Uh, I think it, and I, I, I don't usually make predictions on the air, but I think over the next few years we can easily see gold at $5,000 an ounce, which is almost five times what it is now. And if you take inflation since 1980 and use the official numbers that were being used at that time, real inflation is $7,600 an ounce for gold. And that figure will increase probably substantially over the next several years. And there is the chance of real disruption in the world, and the price could go much higher. As you all know, well, maybe you don't know. Maybe I'm telling you something you don't know. For centuries, troops in Europe, when they went into battle, or when they had people dropping or going behind other people's lines, they always sewed gold coins into their clothing so that if they had to buy their way out of a situation, they could do that. The perennial coin that was used was the British British sovereign, and uh, all of the the British troops carried them. And so uh, the use of gold for all sorts of things uh, has been in use for a long, long time, uh, going back to the uh, 17th century. And so uh, these are important things for you to know. And you should be investing and and doing the things that I've told you to do because, unfortunately, for the last 21 years now, I've been right uh, 98% of the time. And um, quite frankly, I hope it continues because I want everybody to know what to do and to know the truth. But the truth is sometimes uh, very distasteful. Uh, Go ahead, Drew. Uh, 